So today I'm going to be showing you how to get up and running with RetroArch for your Steam Deck. I'm going to be looking at saving loading states, how to import your games into RetroArch. I'm going to briefly look on overlays on your screen and video settings in general. So if you've got a Steam Deck and you're a little bit confused with RetroArch and how to run your games and how to do this and that, this is definitely a setup guide that you need to watch. So check this one out. <laughs> Okay then, so I'm assuming that you've got RetroArch installed and that would have came once you installed MU Deck. So what we're going to do is just go to play and that's going to take us directly into RetroArch itself. And granted, this can look very confusing, but what we're going to do first is take a look at the core. So if we stay within main menu and go to online updater, if we then go to core downloader, you'll see all the cores that you've got through RetroArch and it's quite likely when you installed MU Deck and Emulation Station most of these cores would have came with it. So what these imply on the far right hand side, these hashtags, is that you've actually got the core. And if you're not sure what cores are, they're kind of like emulators which work exclusively with RetroArch and these power your games. So let's say on the off chance you don't have cores, all we do is just simply left click on that core and it will say downloading and the core has now been installed. So for this brief setup guide to what I'm doing today, I'm actually looking at showing you how to run Nintendo NES games just as an example. So if we go down to the Nintendo NES section, you'll notice that I've got several of the Nintendo NES cores already installed. And I did this when I set up Emu Deck Emulation Station. It downloaded all the cores for me. But like I say, on the off chance you don't have these cores, then just simply left click on them. And it will download and install. So let's come out of here. And what I do recommend doing is update installed cores. And this is going to update, literally update every core to the latest version. So just think of emulators uh, such as RPCS3. Uh, every day it pretty much gets an update. And it's going to give you the best experience. And so that's the same situation for cores within RetroArch. And whilst we're waiting for those cores to update, what we're going to do next, which I seriously recommend, is to just scroll down the touch on Online Updater, Update Core Info Files, just left click on that one, and let's just update everything to get you up to date with all your cores, and so RetroArch is uh, top notch. So we're next going to update Assets. And next up, I recommend updating Database too. And if we come back out of here, I always recommend just going down to configuration file and save new configuration so you don't lose your settings. And RetroWatch can be quite famous for that. So always get into the habit of saving everything that you're doing within RetroWatch. And if we come out of here, what I'm gonna show you next is actually how to play your games and import them within RetroWatch on Steam Deck. So what we're gonna do first is just test. So when you put your games onto your emu deck to use an emulation station, they're likely already gonna be on your say SD card, external SD card. So let's just test if this is working. So if we stay within the main menu section, so what I'm gonna do is just simply go down to load content and my games for emulation station is in my start directory. And if I just scroll down, this is gonna list everything that Emu Deck and Emulation Station installed on my USB stick for the first time. And what I'm specifically looking for is SNES. And here's my SNES folder and here's my game. So I'm going to just test to see if one of these games is going to work. So I'm going to try one of my favorite games and this is Bubsy. Now what I'm going to do next is just go to load archive and from here it's given us suggested cores. None of these cores are going to work. We need to scroll down and select a Super Nintendo, a SNES core for this. And I recommend SFC SNES 9X. If we go on this one. What could possibly? 
but you're wrong. And as we see that's working fine and if I hit both of these analog sticks that's going to bring us back into the RetroArch quick menu and if I press B that's going to bring us here and from the quick menu we can just go to close content and I'm pressing A to select this option. Okay so next up what we're going to do is actually import our games into RetroArch so we have to keep going through that long process each time and to do this I'm going to just go to import content. I'm going to go to manual scan and content directory. This is going to bring us back into the root of all your systems. And if I just scroll down once again, just to find SNES. Scan this directory. And then if I go right to the bottom, I'm going to go to start scan. Scan complete, come out. And as we can see, we've now got SNES on the side just here. And let's try and open one of these up again. So Bubsy. And this time I'm going to go to set core association. And what this is going to do is prevent us from having to scroll all the way down to find a core. This is actually going to set up a default core. So set core association. And again, I'm going to be using SNES 9X. And here it is. And so now I've imported my two SNES games into RetroArch, once we boot RetroArch up, we're always going to see this unless you delete it. So let's boot up another game, which I've just imported, Super Double Dragon, and let's also set the core association, SNES 9X. And remember just to save your configuration. So main menu, configuration, and save current configuration. And let's actually boot up a SNES game, which I've just imported. So let's just go to Super Double Dragon and run. And remember to come back into the RetroWatch quick menu, if you just push down on both of these analog sticks, that's going to bring you back here. And here we can also go to save states. And we can save our games manually by going to save state. And that's saved. If I play this a little bit longer. And if I want to load the state where I've just saved it from, just simply go to load state. So let's take a look at some video settings. If we come out of here, if we scroll down just a bit further, we can play around with shaders. If we just go in here and make sure video shaders is enabled and go down to load and shader slang, this then will give us lots of different shaders and let me show you an example what a shader does. So if I go down to scan lines and select this one and then select another scan line option such as scan lines slang. And if I go back into the game, we now got scan lines. I'm not sure if that's coming out on the video, but I can definitely see scan lines here. And if we access the quick menu within RetroWatch, let's look at some video settings. So if I go up to settings and video, scaling, I'm going to turn integer scale on. And as you can see in the background, our game has now changed. So we go back into the game, main menu, quick menu, resume. And 
and it's slightly made the screen a little bit smaller but it's not so pixelated so again if we go to settings video scaling we can change the aspect ratio here but just remember super nintendo games and most games from the 80s and early 90s to the mid 90s were designed for 4x3 if we change this to 16x9 and go back into the game the image is then going to be pretty stretched and if we go to settings again video scaling let's change aspect ratio to full and that's become more of a full picture but we've also got integer scale on if we turn this off you will then get an absolute full screen so main menu quick menu resume And you'll notice on the sides, these are called decorations. We can actually take these off. After a quick menu, if we just go down to on-screen overlay, we can actually turn those decorations on the sides on or off. And under overlay preset, we can change these. So quick menu, resume. And now I just applied a random Sega 32X decoration. So remember to take these on and off. It's just a case of quick menu, on-screen overlay, and display overlay on or off. And remember, overlays are decorations pretty much. If you want to put it on, then just remember to go to overlay preset and you can change these overlays or decorations from here. Quick menu, resume. So that's it for today's Steam Deck in Retro Arch Brief Setup Guide. So I've covered most of the basics, important games, video settings, overlays, save and load states. So if you're new to my channel and you like what you've seen today, do hit notifications, subscribe and like it. Helps my channel a great deal. Plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I release it, which is almost every day. I mainly cover systems such as retro back front ends, bit of launch box and retro watch on Windows PC. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.